Hello. Uh, let's see, I'm going to start my live stream. Uh, I suppose people will come in. I don't know if I will repost this on YouTube. We'll see about that later. And I have to keep talking for two minutes until TikTok starts sending people to my page so you can see me. Let's expand this thing. Ah, all right. It's been a productive day. I've been uh, producing my latest trance song. It's going to be finished in a few days. No more than a week. Ah, see, I see the first viewers coming in, so I can start talking them. Mm, someone I was following on TikTok, Daria from Slovenia. She was a uh, likely device banned. It means that whenever she tries to register a new account for TikTok, uh, those are automatically banned as well. And she has to buy another phone in order to get back on TikTok. So, but I don't think she will. This is very sad. Like the most interesting people who hardly have like a few hundred views on their videos, they get banned. What for? Because they say things that upset the power people. And it's just so sad that we have so many people in power, apparently, or people working for the people in power, you know, censoring the internet, censoring our thoughts. You know how weird that is? Imagine a world where you would be able to speak your mind and nobody would be able to do anything about it. You could stick your fingers in your ears or close your eyes, but other than that, you wouldn't be able to stop the speech. Wow, what a different world that would be. That would be a really different world. So strange to be, to be in this timeline where you are not allowed to speak and they want to go after, if they could read your thoughts, they would convict you for your thoughts. <laughs> you know? Right, saying the truth while using social media is a criminal offense, yeah, it's just as weird. And now there's laws, speech laws in, in Scotland that are so extreme, you can go to jail for seven years if you don't like somebody from the rainbow cult. Or in Poland, they want to do it for three years. You can go to jail for three years if you offend somebody from the rainbow cult. Is, do you think that's going to make us like the rainbow people? No, it's going to make us absolutely hate them. And I think we can predict a massive, violent blowback against precisely that group of people. <laughs> They're, they're trying to put themselves in power by legislating themselves into a special class that must be respected. But, but they're such a tiny minority and they have no other skills. This is their thing. The only thing they do is bend over, you know. No, <laughs> they don't stand a chance. When the people get mad, it's over for them. This is what happens when you get drunk on power, right? And you start to imagine you can be a god or something, you know. That's when the people come knocking on your door. The people are not going to tolerate this or accept this. You know, it's just so, so bizarre. <clears throat> yeah, but it is always uh, a painful experience when you get banned or when uh, people you are following that you like very much get banned because they, they're not even bad people. They're just really good people, uh, you know, trying to speak their minds, really. They're not in it to sabotage or subvert the power people even they're just there for their own sake to be able to express their own thoughts about the world because no one else is, you know, the people who are a bit ahead of their time, as that's what Daria used to say, if you're ahead of your time. I watched her only live stream she ever did. That was last Friday night or so. Uh, she had a lot of interesting things to say, uh, you know, and she spoke about people who are ahead of their time, people who see the truth coming when others are still in the dark. Other people are still very much attached to the materialist world that we live in. Whereas, um, you know, I suppose us, what do you call us? The re reactionaries or uh, right wingers. Or I, I don't know. I think I would use the word reactionaries to describe ourselves. Um, and so, we, uh, we see the truth coming when other people have no clue about what's going on in the world, right? And that's, that's so weird. Uh, yeah, I've been to university, but I think it's bad. It wasn't very useful. It's all, it's all uh, education is domestication, basically. It's all uh, <clears throat> meant to uh, teach you to think the right way. Turns out highly educated people, meaning the people who spent most years in education, 
they are also the most brainwashed people most likely to agree with the government. <laughs> so I'm an exception in this sense. I also went to university, but you know, I, uh, uh, I ended up <laughs> very much disagreeing with everything. So that's the difference. You know, some people, this is the problem with the highly intelligent people. Most of them, not all, but most of them are also subservient to authority. It means uh, you cannot expect them to speak the truth because they won't, you know. <clears throat> you know, the Netherlands has a, has, a, has a system like that, yeah. Yeah, of course, you have different uh, intellectual levels, so that's, that's probably normal. I wouldn't do much about that, you know. It's just that the highly educated people tend to, tend to, tend to get jobs with the government anyway. Did you know that eco uh, economists, the majority of them are employed, are employed by the government, so they always agree with government policy. <laughs> Or uh, most scientists, they get their funding from government and business, so they always do what government and business want. It's all, uh, if you think about it, there are just very few people in a position to do something about our societies, you know? So I try to be one of those who, who does something about the society uh, by speaking so far. Maybe, uh, let's see how far I can get. You know, people ask me, why don't you start a political party or why don't you join politics? But I think I would just be canceled and shot or I wouldn't be able to achieve much. I was always thinking that the way to achieve something to really transform society is to do it through religion. So I want to somehow, uh, I don't want to create a new religion. I just want to use the Christianity that we have in the Western world to use that as a weapon to fight globalism. And I think, I think that's exactly what Christianity is for anyway. Yeah. Education society it gives you a piece of paper backed by <laughs> oh yeah the money yeah the US dollar yeah it's a piece of paper backed by nothing but hearsay and say so yeah that's probably true neo yeah okay I don't know if this is like the matrix but I think globalists would like it to be the matrix where they can plug you into those uh, cocoons you know with the tube in your mouth and then you're like oh. <laughs> I think they would like to do that. I think they would absolutely like to uh, plug us into uh, into the matrix so they can just live off of us. And, you know, it's, it's just bad, you know. What, what, what happened? What do you think about the Gallagher incident from Chelsea? Uh, I didn't hear about it. Can you explain what it was about? Today I was busy. I didn't read the news today, so... Thoughts on the Turkish? I don't know. Yeah, the religious concept is brought up here to like return of the old gods, as they're saying. Yeah, all right, that's what it is. Yeah. So, no, I didn't deblock you. I was banned. So now I'm blocking you again. No, Europe doesn't need labor. Europe has overpopulated it. The way it, even with only white people, Europe would be overpopulated by a factor 10 or so. We need to go down to 50 million in Europe to survive in the long term. Otherwise, all that's going to happen is you're going to have this massive urbanization. Europe might turn into a giant city full of concrete, glass and steel. No one will actually like it here. Everybody will be a slave of corporations. And in the end, that will still collapse. So it's only a matter of when, not, you know, not how. <laughs> yeah, is that so? People don't need religion when there's welfare. Yeah. Well, yeah, of course, the state steps in and takes it takes the place of. Uh, I used to think that the state was like a father, but of course, a modern state is like a mother who nurtures the children. But this mother is a devouring mother who also doesn't want you to be independent. They're trying to prevent you from becoming independent so that you will always be dependent on the state. And of course, independent people, they internalize a sense of divinity, a sense of God, and they therefore use God for their own survival. Basically, you, are, you have a free will, you uh, have a consciousness of your own, a mind of your own, you have the capacity to make your own decisions and to deal with setback. And I think that's, of course, the principle that I support, not not to be um, the victim of learned helplessness and then submit yourself to a father state or mother state, actually. Because it's mommy media and daddy government. These are like stand-ins for, for your parents. So 
The point is that you should have become independent by, by adulthood so that you don't need these things anymore, but they'll do it anyway, you know? <sighs> Someone's laughing their ass off, yeah, okay. Yeah, paper money backed by nothing is the new religion, sort of, yeah. They're like, what do you call them? Indulgences, yeah, your salary is an indulgence or something, right? Yeah, I was just thinking about social media. Uh, no, last night I was thinking about the, the meaning of social media. It has really shown us what people are like. And a lot of people are very, uh, <laughs> very disappointed with humanity thanks to this. I mean, no, I'm not going to get my accounts back. It's like a permanent ban forever. So I, there was no appeal option and I tried to email them, but no response, you know. Yeah. But I already have what eight thousand uh, followers on this uh, on this one already, almost. So it's going quickly. I, some videos went viral already. I had like one video with uh, four hundred thousand views almost. You know, now all my accounts were banned. All the accounts I had on the phone were can were banned together because it was a device ban, uh, a device ban, a hardware ban. It means I'm not allowed to start another account on my phone. This is my backup phone. You know. Hold on. It's interesting that people on this app are always allowed to insult me, but then when I simply tell them uh, to shut up, that comment is flagged. So people can call you a moron, but if you call them to shut up, that your comment is flagged. It's really weird, you know? I don't know what that is, you know? The video site, well, who cares, you know? Uh. Opinion on phalangism. Yeah, I looked into phalangism. It's this hard authoritarian Spanish uh, system. Yeah, uh, you know, you have to work out the details. You know, in essence, I feel that people should not be slaves of the state or the corporations. They should actually be uh, be free to make their own decisions, but that requires them to be actually independent adults, you know, and that, that is what I think a lot of people don't want. The majority of people like civilian citizens, they don't want that responsibility anymore. And so that's why I think there's going to be a split between those people who will remain victims of the system and those who are ready to break, break loose, free themselves and start new lives. You know, you know, in the, in the Netherlands, there was a, uh, in the Netherlands, there was a, 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 a talk about becoming a small time farmer in, uh, in Russia, Western Russia. Uh, and I think if there wasn't a war with Russia right now, if there was no conflict with Russia, a lot of people from Western Europe would be moving there because they have a, so much land for farming where, where you can do pastoralism, right? Russia has so much land where you can do pastoralism. And so Dutch farmers could have moved there had there not been a war. And that's just, you know, the big problem. It, I think uh, LGBT, the rainbow cult, is actually uh, meant as psychological sabotage to sabotage people to prevent them from having children. It's deliberate by design by the governments. Right? I think I remember reading that at Yale University in the United States, Yale University, there were, there were a bunch of intellectuals there in the 1960s who uh, uh, they were from the Frankfurt School and they were uh, they actually designed the whole LGBT thing that we have now. It was designed. It was just created by a bunch of professors who wanted to do this, you know. Yeah, the Netherlands is already... Uh, the Netherlands, I describe it now as a slave colony, a slave state, where you are a, a slave of your job, a slave of the mortgages, and only the rich people can have what they want, but that's like maybe half a percent or less of people, you know? Now, if you want a homogenous society, we need to just, you know, make a lot of radical decisions. It's really not just the currency at all. Right, they were kicked out and they came to the United States. All right, I remember watching the videos by Vertigo Politics 
They were so good. For some reason, he quit. He was on YouTube back in the day when YouTube was still big. You know, imagine uh, Vertigo Politics had been on TikTok. <laughs> uh, his videos would have woken so many people up. I sometimes rewatch those videos yeah, about the Marxists and so on. It was really good content. I never really found that good content until I also found uh, a channel by the name of The Daniel Natal Show. Sorry, on, uh, on, uh, on YouTube. Yeah, that's just really great. Yeah, I think there will be a, a war between Africa and Europe. Yeah, because of China and Russia, they are funding and uh, supplying the Africans. And I think China and Russia will want the Africans to go to war with Europe. So Europeans need to be aware of these things, but they're not. Our leaders are just so... You think our leaders know about these things? No, no, they don't. They're so focused on Ukraine right now. That's their, their focal point, right? They have like binoculars like this, and they can only see in one direction. They don't see what's going on around them. Is that uh, Ukraine is just a distraction for a much, much bigger war, you know? Yeah, exactly. These are the sort of people like Bram here, Bram here. They're ignorant. They're so ignorant. Goodbye, you know, loser. You know, here. Hold on. Thank you very much. Hold on. I'm cleaning up the trolls because they won't come back next time. And I actually have a lot of things to say, but I'm not here to be abused. So, you know, that's unacceptable. Hold on. You live in Africa, you're not aware of this. Well, you know, the Russians and the Chinese are in Africa. They're taking over from the West. And then what? Then what's going to happen? You know, look at what happened in the country of Niger. Niger broke loose from the French colonials, right? They sent the French away. Uh, they sent, they also broke the contract with, uh, with the Americans. They had a military contract with the USA. They broke that contract. And so they're switching to China and Russia. Uh, and that means, you know, you know, I can guess what's going to happen. You know, they're going to prepare for uh, a push against Europe, a push against all of that. You know? uh, now, free speech is not a human right at all. Historically, everybody in power always silenced everybody else. So the point is you need to be in power. And that's what we're going to do. We're going to just take over, you know, it's fucking nonsense. Oh, hold on. I don't want to live with foreigners, man. It's just such a simple idea. I, you are the one who apparently is so in love with us that you want to live with us rather than with your own people. That's very strange to me. I would never do that, you know? Yeah. We have, we have uh, people have the right to live in a place where they have their own culture, where their culture is dominant in their territory and where they speak their own language and other people speak the same language. So you can understand each other, work together and feel like you're part of something that's, that is supportive, that you support yourself, you know? Yeah, I have a lot of friends who share my beliefs. They're on TikTok too, you know? All right, you moved to the Netherlands seven years ago, yeah. What do you think of the Netherlands then? I think the biggest nightmare of the West is when Africa starts manufacturing its resources. That's not a nightmare. <laughs> if Africa starts building its own industry, then immigration to Europe will stop. So it's going to be good for us. I keep telling Africans, you know, you need industry, build your own industry. Don't, don't wait for the Chinese to do it or, or, or us to do it. You do it yourself for yourself. That's just a good thing that you can build your own cities, your own industry, you have your own wealth. And then we in Europe will be fine. You know, we will have nature again, we'll fresh air and, and so on. Not a big deal, you know. I don't know what happened in Burkina Faso. Just explain to me what happened, or maybe I'll respond to it, you know. Yeah, in Dublin, D Dublin, Ireland, post a lot of my my stuff. Yeah, for some reason I feel a good connection with Ireland because the Irish people. I'm from the south of the Netherlands, which is Catholic, so maybe that's the maybe that's the reason. Uh, and and Ireland, I suppose, is Catholic, right? So mostly, you know. It's not like it's super important, but I, there's something of a connection there, right? <laughs> uh, don't you, user, user number, don't you think it's sad that you think you were born for the economy? See, that's your problem. We don't need your talents. What we need is we need to put an end to the slave system. 
so we can live free again and we don't need people coming here to work for us. We need them in their own countries building their own future so they don't come with us anymore. I mean, this is the whole damn problem. Do you want to live in an economic zone or in a nation that cares about its people? That's what I want, see? They'll take your wealth. No, they won't. We still have our skills and our intelligence. We will be fine. We will have fresh air and clean water. Finally, you know? So I was talking about Ireland, and I think Ireland is, uh, you know, I think they're trying to destroy Ireland with mass immigration because the British, they always try to destroy the Irish for some reason. Do you know the Irish famine? Right. Do you know how it happened? So the English were buying their grain from the Irish farmers until they could get cheaper grain from the Hindu farmers in India. And then they switched to the, to the Hindu farmers and then they let the Irish people starve. That's why they starved. You know, for some reason, they really hate the Irish, the, the British, like the Anglo, they really hate the Irish, maybe because they're Catholic. I don't know what, what, what that reason really is, but it's bizarre, you know? Historically, that this happens, you know? <laughs> right, hold on. I don't know what third position is, man. War. You can't come from the money because Europe, Europe doesn't have your money. Wealth is generated when you mix your labor with resources. Now you have the resources, so where is your labor? Why aren't you building industries? Why aren't you doing the work? We in Europe, we did the work. We did the work during the industrial age. Our people were working 100 hours a week in the factories. Yeah, So we did the work. That's why we got the wealth. Yeah, the euro is also uh, going down. I think there's been rumors on Telegram that Iran might want to attack Israel. And I think I did an interview with Daniel Natal on YouTube. We were talking about this, that probably very likely Israel is not going to survive. You know, Europe will deal with Russia. We have resources. And by the way, Europe also has resources. People think we don't, but we do. Germany still has like 10% of the world's coal supply. You can turn coal into oil. So we still have lots of, we have lots of things that we can use, you know. It's a bit weird that people are, are so uninformed, you know. We also have the best, the best pastures for pastoralism. So in principle, we could just grow our own food, you know. Yeah, it's going to be a revenge for the attack on Damascus, apparently. Uh, some Iranian uh, generals were killed there or something. Yeah, well... My point is Russia has Western West, Northwestern Russia has massive woodlands that are sparsely populated. If something goes wrong in Europe, we would have to move there. So the question is, when is this stupid war going to be over? You know? All right. So the pension is very low in Russia, you mean? Okay. <laughs> no, no. An economic zone is a flag. See, you don't get it. I want a nation that cares about the people, that supports its own people. I don't care about the flag and the economic zone. That's you. It seems like you don't even understand what I'm talking about. And you need to go back to school. You know. France and England, you know, whatever. All right, I've just been talking for 20 minutes or so. I always usually try to fill up an, up to an hour, but only only if I have something to say, you know. The bigger problem is that uh, common people, normies, they go along with authority. So if you're not the authority, they will follow some other authority. And how do you establish yourself as the authority? All right. Usually that's because the authority has the right to wield violence, to use violence. In the Netherlands, we have a concept of, uh, uh, well, I don't know, the, the monopoly on violence. The state has the monopoly on violence. So if you are, that's weird, right? So people simply listen to the most violent authority. Weird, huh? So that kind of implies that in order to take over power in Europe, you'd have to become more violent than the governments.
Somebody just thought that when I use the word nation, I don't mean the fucking flag. The word nation used to mean people, an ethnic people is a nation. Our nation, the nation is our people, the people of this blood. You know, it's not about a flag. A flag, that's, that's statism. Now we can have flags to signal our movement and signal ourselves, but it's really about how well we are doing, how well our people are doing. That's the problem when you speak to people who are dumb, you know? <laughs> yeah, the authorities have the monopoly of violence, and then as a consequence, normies, they follow that authority because they're afraid of the violence. Yeah. So it's strange to think that we are supposed to be liberal democracies, but we're also uh, have a monopoly on violence that people submit to. That's the only reason that people follow the government, because they're afraid of the violence. It's the only reason why they obey. If we could, so there's two versions, by the way, there's two ways. We might also attempt to teach people to stop being afraid of the government violence, of the police violence, of the state violence. Then they might also overthrow the government. Or you have to become more violent than the state, but then you'll also have to defeat the state. So it's either way, you know. I think it would be better to use religion to teach people to stop being afraid of the violence of the government, and then we might actually revolt against the government. We will attempt it non-violently, of course, you know. What a stupid question, you know. Do you hate white people? You hate white people, you know, that's your problem. Go away. Well, the economy can collapse anyway, but then, you know, you still need to have some kind of a cultural system to start something new. Hold on. Strange questions, you know? Yeah, money is a scam. In the end, it's labor and skill and resources that matter, you yeah? know, and land. Yeah, you say gold can't be controlled, but of course, in the Netherlands, there's a law that says that the state has the right to seize your gold. So, yeah, but the state can still seize your gold, so you're not, you're not safe. And then these people, they put their gold in safe safety deposit boxes, right? But the state has the right to seize those boxes before you get there, so. In the end, it comes down to trading time, because time cannot be taken away from you. You spend it yourself. So we need an economy based on time. How much time do you are you willing to spend on something for someone, in exchange for someone else spending time for you? And that way, when you exchange time, all of a sudden, money has no more power. I think that might be a, an interesting solution, you know? No, that's wrong, Johnny Bean. This is, we're not value conservatives. Like, oh, I don't mind if the world comes to live with us and we become minorities, as long as they follow our culture. But first of all, they won't. Once they're the majority, they're not gonna live by your culture. They're gonna live by their own. And secondly, we want to protect our people. So we want the sort of values in place to protect our people. That means close the borders. You know, we don't want to live with everybody. It's also nonsense. Why don't, if these people are so talented, why don't they work in their own countries now? Right, we can create our own private banks, but I was talking about, why don't we use the concept of time as a currency? That's probably a lot better. But do you need maybe, Maybe you would need smaller communities to that, yeah? Advertises from this account? I don't know what that means, yeah? Anyway, uh, I started talking like half an hour ago or so. And, uh, let's see if I can fill an hour. I don't know if I can do it. But... 
Let's see if some interesting ideas come up. Meanwhile, let's just drink some water. Thoughts on clearing out Ukraine in case of a failed Israel? Mm. I think Ukrainian people deserve to exist in Ukraine, you know? To our, like bushcrafting survival stuff. I sometimes go on hikes for a few days with a backpack, yeah, and with my tools. Yeah, a little bit. Cooking in the wild sometimes, yeah. I used to have that SAS survival guide as a kid. Yeah, I used to try this out when I was young, but you know. No, I'm not gonna do advertising. But the idea of gold is also weird because gold is just a material. It has no value. It only has value to people with narcissism who uh, who want to have golden bling around their neck or some golden teeth. And to everybody else, it, it, you can't eat gold. So, you know, it's a bit strange. Yeah? People have value, inherent value. People and their labor and their skills and their intelligence and their minds. Yeah, that has value. <laughs> You're leaving the Netherlands, yeah. <laughs> Time can only be spent once too, so. No, um, this is my English channel. I don't speak Dutch here. Right. Hello from Norway. Yeah, I went hiking last summer in the, at the Hardanger Vida. It was so, it was in June. And the first day was sunny, but then I got higher up in the mountains. It was snow, ice, fog, hail, rain. <laughs> I, I got hypothermia and I almost died there because I, I was shaking like this from the cold, trying to put my tent together so I could get into my sleeping bag and stay warm. <laughs> that was heavy, man. It was fun, though. When I, when I survived out the next morning, I had like two hours of sunshine. I went back down the mountain to a cabin, and there I got warm in the uh, in the uh, in this wooden this log cabin. Uh, I met some people there, some uh, some guys from Scotland and a girl from uh, Ukraine. Yeah, we spoke about yeah. Yeah, I was not prepared for the cold because uh, I thought it was summertime. I'm from the Netherlands. I thought, oh, it's summer, right? It's warm. <laughs> I did have I did have some things. I was able to wrap a uh, uh, how do you, what do you call it uh, a towel. I wrapped a towel around me, and of course I had my raincoat. Uh, I was I survived, but you know. Yeah. <laughs> Troll tunga, troll tunga, yeah, the troll's tongue, yeah, I saw that. That was that was really awesome, yeah. I read a story that some girl slipped and she fell off the troll tunga. Yeah. Trolls, troll stiga. I don't know, Hardanger Vida, and then you go up and there's this rock that, you know, hangs out. I think they call it the Troll Town of Trollstick, I don't know what they call it. Uh, thoughts on the Russian propaganda saying the Ukrainians are ruled by both Jews and Nazis? Yeah, probably. Yeah, I used to read Nietzsche a lot. When I was a teenager, the will to mark the will to power and so on. But the aphorisms. And later also, I read almost all the books by Nietzsche. Of course, he's very smart, but he's weird because sometimes he argues for left with leftism, sometimes for right-wingism. It's like he tries to fuse these things to get together sometimes. 
So I don't, I don't know what to make of Nietzsche. I think he uh, was very influential, but also uh, there's a reason why he went mad. I think he was a universalist at heart, really. You know, there was a time where people didn't have any currency, no gold, nothing. All they did was share time with each other. So I'll help you. I'll help you fix your roof. You help. You give me a check out. You know, it was. Uh, it was like that. You know. <clears throat> yeah. <clears throat> I've noticed that. In the Western world, our political people and our media and so on, and probably the rich elites as well, they are very slow to catch on to what is going on. They're usually at least five years behind. Like they should have been making decisions long ago. They wait five years arguing against these decisions. And then all of a sudden they realize that they were wrong and now they're going to do it anyway. And it's like with, uh, you know, with uh, the medical disaster we had from 2019, for example, that was five years ago already. It's, it's like yesterday. It's, the world is weird, you know. Time is flying, yeah. Well, wait until you meet the coin clippers. Gold does not keep people honest. It creates coin clippers. Now you have the tungsten forgeries, so... Uh, Edward Dutton, yeah. Sent before their time. Professor Dutton, yeah, that was a good book. We will be forced to use digital money at some point because the economies are dying, the rich are trying to save themselves. So they are going to figure out a way to keep the poor in check, the bottom 98%. And uh, if they have to starve us, they'll just starve us and they'll, they'll say that they have no choice because they're just psychopaths anyway. Edward Dutton from London, probably, yeah, Professor Dutton. <clears throat> yeah, I actually spoke to Edward Dutton uh, long ago, a few years ago, I was on his show. I think it's on uh, BitChute or Rumble or somewhere. Or you can go to jmk.info and look at my interviews. I, I think I posted the link there, you know. No, I'm not a socialist. <laughs> I'm a reactionary. But I don't know if uh, Edward Dutton liked me very much because he started talking about this topic that I felt like, you know, didn't really know much to say about. And then I wanted, I wanted to say more. Uh, but I think he, is he, isn't he a leftist or so? That was my impression. I spoke to him for an hour, but I felt like I couldn't really express my mind to him because I think he didn't like it. He didn't like to hear it or something. Yeah, fiat currencies, all currencies, including gold systems, all of it is all uh, controlled by the overlords, by the masters, you know. They don't care about you. Time to wake up, huh? I realize now at this point uh, that Uh, I think at this point, uh, common people are not going to do anything. They will die out before they will respond. That's just how it is, you know. Uh, and I think that's why what we should do is we should prepare to cut loose. Those, let's say 20% or so of our people in Europe or in the West are prepared to do something at all, to fight. Maybe even less than that, maybe 10%, 4%. And we... Uh, are willing to break away from this exploitative bad system. And then we, we cut loose 
and we reestablish our own nations, by which I mean people of the blood. So I don't think that we can uh, go on like this. This is coming to an end, man. All right, I run out of things to say and usually then I should just quit it. So I spoke for 40 minutes. Uh, I tried to do an hour, but you know, I'm empty. <laughs> uh, so I'll talk to you again next time. Uh, maybe uh, maybe tomorrow, maybe in the weekend or something here. All right, see you later.